Hello everybody, I'm Johan Smit, a wildlife photographer from South Africa and today I'm going to do a video on, uh, basically in this video I'm going to review my own images. So this is a new series I'm going to begin and this will obviously be episode one and I'm going to call it my own photo review. And so the first episode I'm going to choose just, or every episode I'm going to choose a bunch of photos that I took good and bad and critique them and review them and tell you what I think of them and then maybe hopefully you can improve your own images and by looking at my uh, critiques of when I critique my own images so also um, I have a new lens I bought myself an Nikon 35 f1.8 so I will do a review on that mm, in the future hello everybody you are from the future year I'm just busy editing my video and I saw that the screen recording is not not good. Something is wrong with it. Um, I recorded, uh, recorded it at 8 frames a second, which is uh, very abnormal. But I, I did, did that because I wanted to put less strain on the computer. But uh, I think uh, that might be a problem. Or, but the recording don't want to go into the screen record, uh, into the editor. So... I'll just show you the, the images on the screen and then you can uh, look at that from there. But I think that'll be fine. Um, let's just start off here with my first image. This image was taken in my garden. And um, I really like this image because of this leaf that, that goes through the image. And this image is quite impressive for me because uh, this is taken in my garden. Oops. And the um, uh, it was taken in my garden, and there, where it was taken, these little birds come, and I I know they come there and eat the worms from watching them for a few days, so I saw them coming and I knew I had to wait for them, and so I did that, and they they come here and they eat the worms off of these plants um, plants, but the thing is, it's quite dark. Um, because there is a bush that cast shadow here and it wasn't a very bright bright day so it was quite tricky because my ISO was at uh, 400 which is the max I would go um, for any color normal shot black and white I would maybe push a little further but I mean this is a color shot normal shot so I was at max ISO and I was at f4.5 I think is the max for my 300 millimeters lens um, so it was quite tricky to get a, a, a sharp image because they, they are very active birds they are very very small also so I have to be zoomed in at 300 mil I think this one is cropped uh, also even if it was even if it, it is at 300 mil so um, it was quite tricky to get a, a sharp shot and this is quite impressive for me because I mean this is quite sharp the focus is on the back which is not ideal obviously you want it to be on the eye and this uh, if it was on the eye the beak and the whole head would have been in the foc in focus because it's the same plane but uh, that's the image um, so I'm quite impressed with it so my, my shutter speed was quite low so it was really a lucky shot I just uh, uh, took a bunch of images and this was the one that was sharp. I did de definitely intentionally frame it like this so it's not just an accident but I mean uh, it's quite lucky sure that it was uh, that it, there was one that's sharp because there are very small birds and they are very very active. So I quite like the shot the framing is good the bird looks into the frame which is always good um, or most of the time but I'm 98% of the time and I also explained this technique and framing um, quite in detail in my um, in my video that I did uh, beginner photography mistakes and how to fix them and I will link this video up here so please go check that out uh, if you are a beginner and you want to just start learning and you're not sure where to begin and uh, not sure all of these bunch of rules and so go check that video out and then the next video ah, oh, shot is taken at uh, our land our form just in uh, at a river and this is a shot 
taken at the river. So I went and I saw these ducks and I know they are quite wild so they will easily fly away. And I didn't want to go closer and go shoot over these reeds. But then I saw they were quite beautiful uh, or quite, come on my light just shot off, um, quite beautiful whole uh, framing uh, by these reeds and so I shot a shot through them intentionally. Um, so I framed the ducks to the to the right because they are looking left once again, rule of thirds, and um, they have to be looking into the frame. Uh, or most of the time you want them to look into the frame. And I just really love the shot because of the framing. Look at all this beautiful frame that the that the foliage creates around these birds. I mean these these reeds just just form a perfect uh, frame around them. And I like it because the the ducks are quite black against these these reeds that are not uh, very very black. They are quite uh, more grayish. And these reeds in the background are black. Yes, I know. And they are maybe can be a little bit distracting because they're also dark. But I think the first thing I look at when I look at these uh, this photo is the birds. And I intentionally um, uh, underexposed this according to Matrix uh, or or if 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 the spot metering was used, this should have uh, would have been underexposed. But for matrix metering, this is uh, exposed correctly because matrix uh, matrix takes the whole frame. And I did this. Uh, I did this because I didn't want to clip these highlights, the water reflection, and I thought I might have been able to pull some detail out, but. It didn't really bother me when I couldn't because I just made it a silhouette and then I made it black and white because uh, I thought it it would have it would look better with black and white because it's even more simple than it, it already uh, is and um, I like the texture on the water also it's uh, I like I really like that um, and I think the ISO was also quite high so that is also a, a strong reason that I chose to make it black and white in the next shot is not so good and this is because the framing uh the, the shot is quite good i think i mean the the the, the framing also the, the framing is good but the composition isn't so i like that uh, this uh these this uh plants um surrounded once again just like the ducks uh creates a border for this for this bird and it's only the eye that's basically in focus it's Ooh, it's a bit blurry but that's fine um, it's acceptable but what is not is the, the composition or the framing and that is because the headroom is not good the head is not in the correct place it's just it's not a very pleasing composition and that is not because I wanted to do that it's because when I shot it here's the raw file um, I didn't frame it correctly um, it's just I did not do that correctly, but uh, on that same day, on that same same hour, basically on that same uh, same shoot, I took this shot, which is a very good shot in my opinion. And just because, come on, um, just because um, the foliage once again, the plants uh, creates a frame, and it's only the bird's eye and head that's basically very sharp. I mean you can still see the bird's, uh, the bird's body which is actually good because I like those little lines on the feathers but um, it's it's still not uh, taking too much attention away from the main focus and I like this uh, this uh, this branch or plant that it sits on once again it crosses the frame diagonally and I like uh, this is quite sharp for my setup which is a cheap quite cheap uh, a zoom lens 55 by 300 and this is quite impressive for my setup which is that lens and my Nikon D3200 which is also not good in low light uh, as I said with the first image I think this was also shot at ISO 400 so I'm impressed that I could have uh, that I could get that much detail out of it um, I just I really like this uh, frame and once again the red in the eye uh, I, I like it because that is also the focus and that is also what makes this bird very unique is this red and so I think this image really uh, shows the bird what makes the bird unique and 
what uh, where the bird prefers to be in its natural habitat. So I really like this image. We're still recording. Then the next one also that same day. So this um, image I took from a boat, a small paddle boat. And that is because the only way I can get such a shot is this was shot in a um, in a dam that is used to uh, water the, the, the citrus, our small block of citrus. And you will see just now with the drone images, uh, the valley we live in is only like citrus, we live around the citrus. Um, but anyway, this was taken in the dam. And the, the reason why this can only be shot from the water, so even uh, from a boat, or I should have stand in, uh, stood in the water, is because this if the sun sets on that side or comes up um, and the bird sits here in this um, uh, in this plant uh, the the side of the dam goes down so there's no way I can frame the bird up against the sky um, if I stood on the same side as the bird um, and that's because I then I would shoot down into the water, which is not a sunset or silhouette. Um, so I had to be in the water shooting uh, on that side of the wall against the sun and then shooting up against the sky or not up at, you know, uh, just into the sky and creating a silhouette. So I like this composition a lot. Once again, look, bird is looking into the frame, bird is not in the middle. Uh, it's a little closer to the middle than I would say that line is. But I think that's acceptable because this plant gives some visual weight on the left side of the frame. And if I would have framed this bird a little bit more to the left, this side would have, uh, they would have gone, be, been too much of an imbalance. And that is not what you want. And these seeds, I love how these seeds glow in the sunlight, the golden um, sunset. And I was quite impressed. Uh, that I did not, I, I think I did clip these, but I mean, there's still color in most of that, so that's good, because I don't, I think I did overexpose it a bit, um, I'm normally on matrix metering, and I, um, I, uh, I use, uh, compensation, exposure compensation, but still, I think I did clip that a bit, um, and this is a, a yellow, or an orange, a red finch, um, or I will bishop, I think. I will put the correct name up there, but it's it's quite a common bird. Or the yellow, the yellow one of these are quite common. This is a red one, which is not that common. But anyway, it's a, it's a good shot. And this is a shot that is taken on a very, very misty morning. I went uh, out and uh, the mist was just, I couldn't see the hand in front of me. Uh, okay, not that bad, but... It was, oh, not bad, but not that that a dense mist. But it was very, very dense. Um, so this was a bird sitting just on a tree. I will show you the whole tree right now. Well, not the whole tree, but the more of a tree, more of the tree. And I really like this image because, once again, the framing, I think, is acceptable and quite good. A lot of negative spots, and it's only two colors, basically. This is a color image, but um, it's basically black and white. And I like it because it's soft, but it's still very, there's a lot of detail. And this is not that sharp because it wasn't that bright. And I think my shutter speed was a little bit too slow. But I mean, I, th I really, I like the shot. Um, then this is the whole tree or the side of the tree. The bird was just up there. And same morning, obviously, um, look at all the mist. This is not photoshopped or something. The colors was not... Uh, yeah, I added vibrance to make it to make the raw file just look uh, realistic. But I mean, um, this is basically how it looked. There was a lot of the blue ambience, but then the the sun there we can see the sun uh, is not even clipping. I mean, look at that. Uh, the mist is was very dense, and so the sun just lit up this this mist to be nice golden glare. Uh, or glow on the side which I really like and I like this because I mean it's a soft image but it's still there's a lot of detail and that's what I really like about this image I think it will make a good print um, we're still recording the next one is that same morning once again uh, this is a telephoto landscape I'm just showing the tree again 
I love telephoto landscapes and that's because the normal the normal landscape photographer looks at a wide wide view and uh, thinks of how uh, thinks things thinks of how he can get an image uh, that is a wide I mean a typical landscape image is wide but I uh, prefer doing telephoto landscapes because I just feel like it tells a whole different story and uh, yeah, it's not something that the average person also sees. So, I mean, the average person will look at the whole view and not just like something there that is tiny but also very strong and powerful and very uh, tells a story on its own. They don't look at that. So, I like doing telephoto landscapes. Um, I really just think it tells a, a different story and a, a not a very common shot that is taken. So this I would consider a telephoto landscape. Then the next one also just definitely is a telephoto landscape. I think this is cropped and it's shot at 300 mil, which is actually 450 mils on a full frame. So this is quite tight. Um, this is uh, also that morning, uh, as you can see, it's at just the top of a mountain we used to live down here. This tells a story to me, I think, uh, because it we lived there and we went up there quite a lot so I don't know if this tells a story to someone else but I think it's quite a good image uh, I love the Sun just just touching the, the, the side of this mountain where the road is and also those colors it's not very sharp because of the mist and it's I mean this is cropped and it's shot at long long uh, at the full range of my lens which it also wouldn't be the sharpest but I just like this image. Um, I really like it. Then, once again, it's a telephoto landscape. It tells a different story than someone else would look at. I will show you this peak in uh, another photo. This is a whole different location. Um, once again, I think it, it shows South Africa um, with these fences keeping in the, the sheep and whatever is uh, grazing here. Um, I mean, you can't see it in here, but there are animals walking. And I just like this red and the blue contrast very well. And this is also, this image is only consists basically of the colors of pixels. So it's red, green, and blue, which is, I don't know, I think it just makes the image very simple and quite, quite beautiful to look at. And I like these dead trees kind of silhouetting against those far, far landscapes there there's a road down there far far away this was once again shot at 300 mil i think so once again telephoto landscape i just i just like the different feeling that it gives very flat also not distorted just flat gives you straight off what you're looking at next one same location basically um same telephoto landscape i just like this road i don't think it's a it's an amazing or a very very unique image but i think it's it it's a good image uh, i like these roads and these fences with um the, the animals probably eating here and i just like this road going up here so i like this image a lot um then oh i also wanted to say i would not put this image in my portfolio um, so if you want to if you want to check out my website my portfolio, please go down in the there's a link in the description So please go check out my website. Please go check out my Instagram also linked down there and Facebook for those of you that Still have Facebook. I also have that linked down below then the next shot. This is a uh, wild goonies taken on a farm that is really means a lot to me that form because I go there a lot and camp there and uh, shoot shoot the night sky and uh, just uh, photograph south african nature basically because it's a very it's a natural uh, habitat it's not uh, it's it's just totally natural um so this shows i really like this image because of the path that the that the um that the hungunis are walking on it creates a weird shape that also guides the viewers eye through the image and just showing uh the pure scale of the night, the, the, the mountains and the, the, 
the natural habitat. Um, this definitely shows South African uh, nature and uh, plant growth and because of all those rocks and I mean there's a typical aloe and um, yeah just shows the typical South African uh, wild wild nature. Um, once again these are wild so we can't could have get clo uh, closer but I didn't want to because I like these telephoto landscapes because um, because of the reasons I mentioned previously. So I really like the shot. Then the next one once again is a telephoto landscape. Um, a simple shot. I like these blacks. Doesn't distract someone. It's just there's no detail. Just uh, everyone looks at those birds. Hopefully uh, that's the intent. And look at this beautiful tree. This this tree makes the shot for me. So. These doves, I think they are doves flying up here. Just it's uh, just it just makes a beautiful just sunset image. I like the gradient also, very subtle uh, peach colored uh, gradient. And the next shot basically the same uh, sunset, same everything. Just there's a harida, which is a very common bird in South Africa. Once again, same tree, same composition, basically. Next shot. This was taken on the same mountain, same ridge, same everything as, same day, everything as this, uh, this Nguni shot, just on the other side of the ridge. So the, the, the Ngunis went, uh, walked there on that side, and this is on this side. So showing a very, very pretty landscape out of focus. That was the, the idea, but I'm going to tell you now why this is not a good shot. Um, but once again, look at this landscape. Uh, I have a panorama, uh, which I actually should just show. I'll put that on the screen. So you just can see the view that is from this plot here in South Africa. Once again, showing the beauty of the, the, uh, wild and high mountains that, that you get here in South Africa. And the, why I say this is not a good shot is because this was the focus, this this little bush here. But um, my lens didn't blow out the background that much. And I don't think that it would, would have done any good, actually, because then you would have not seen this beautiful mountains and stuff in the background. But what I should, uh, what I should have done is I should have moved my camera more to this side, more down, oopsie, more down here and um um so that the bush kind of creeps out into this blue more blue color and not because now it's just hidden behind this green uh, growth on this mountain and it doesn't stand out so it's not a good shot therefore once again great view i'll show you the image up the the panorama um then the next shot just a typical Beautiful sunset photo, not very uh, interesting foreground or anything. It's not a, a very um, uh, very in, uh, uh, good photo necessarily. It's just an amazing sunset. So I just wanted to show you this. Um, uh, this is uh, from the view from from our house. Um, I like this yellow and the blue and then this orange. I like that the color is not clipped which can sometimes happen with JPEG. Uh, I shot this in RAW, obviously, but still, uh, the colors just, everything is kept together, just very, very pretty. Sometimes we get sunset where even the RAW just, you can't get that color desaturated almost because it's kind of, it clipped the camera, uh, the, the, it clipped the, the color. Um, just beautiful sunset. Here we can see the, that tree where I shot the the the, the, the previous two those two uh, sunset of the um, of the the tree and the bird and so this is a panorama obviously uh, I don't have a wide angle that covers that much then a drone shot so this drone shot shows a lot the tree is right here where the the tree that I just explained. I like this river. This is river. It's also the river where I shot those two ducks in the second image, I think. And that was just down here. The river just continues and 
day I shot that one. This shows, also shows all of the orchards, citrus, um, that we live in this, this, uh, our town is basically based on citrus. Uh, we would have, we wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for the citrus. This is a beautiful, this, this, this river just makes the image interesting. And this green uh, field and these trees that are parallel, sh uh, facing towards or, or pointing towards the mountains, which is also kind of a focus of me, of the image. And then the river, come on. And then the river also guiding the viewer's eye to the mountains. And the mountains that I shot, these other images, the Goonies and the, that other panorama that I showed and the, 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 the image that it wasn't so good was in that mountains, there, behind there. So, mm, yeah, the, the story comes together. Same composition, basically, just a little bit further back, which isn't, I would actually prefer to go a little bit to our step side, but I think my battery was about to go. Uh, by the way, this was all shot on the Mavic Mini. Um, I love the orange glow of the tips of these trees. Once again, same composition, but I just, I like the sun's, uh, sunrise shot, and there's also the, the uh, beautiful pink on those mountains. So I don't have a lot of a lot to say more than the other one on this shot, but it's I like the shot. Next one is a vertical panorama uh, taken with my Mavic Mini. Once again, very long straight road showing the orchards once again of uh, the place where we live. And just a beautiful morning just before the sun uh, sunrise. This was this shot was taken before this shot, just before. So yeah, uh, I like this shot. And uh, if you want to know uh, how to do vertical or just any panorama with your Mavic Mini, I ha I will do a video on that in the future. And I will link the, the video on how to do HDR just above here. Um, and then, oh, here, this is an HDR shot. Once again, with my Mavic Mini, I will link the video on how to do HDR with a drone up here. And I just like the shot. Uh, once again, rule of thirds, the sun is excuse me the sun is to the right and i like these rays that the, the shadow casts in the mist just a, a warm uh, glow golden glow and uh, i like this bird also <laughs> yeah then the next one is i've been doing a lot of star uh, astrophotography lately because of this lens the lens isn't really an astrophotography lens because it's not wide but it can work for for panoramas and stuff like that so this is a time lapse taken with my homemade remote i'll do a video on this sometime in the future um uh it's based on an arduino it's uh, built in a um in a uh, food uh, box um with an on and off switch time lapse mode and just single shot mode and a button shutter release button so this is an intervalometer and shutter is built in into one uh, or just is basically an intervalometer and it works infrared because i didn't have a cable or a plug to go into my camera so i built it infrared um it works off a nine volt battery and this thing will last i don't know i it, it didn't run out of battery yet but I will predict it will last a year on a battery because these things are so low on power. Uh, and I just like it. And as you will see right now, it does a good job with time lapses. So let's check this time lapse out. This was taken at, uh, at my house again and with these aloes just in the, in the foreground. So let's go. I have short, not not amazing but it's my first astro time lapse and i think that's just basically why i like it um i like these foreground uh, with its aloes and the milky way was just about to come in here and the 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 southern cross was just about to come in so that's it uh, not 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 amazing uh, but but it's good i like it i really like it a lot um, but this remote really, it it does a good job. I'm very impressed. And then my final final shot, and this was also my first. 
I would say successful Astro shot. Not very, not not amazing, but but it's I, I like it. The tree is the first time I did something in the foreground, which is absolutely, in my opinion, uh, necessary absolutely for Astro shots. And here we can see the Southern Cross. There, that one, that one, that one, that one. That's just, that's the cross. There's the coal sack. It's a dark cloud, basically in space. And there are two stars, the pointers of the Southern Cross, uh, with one of that's a double star, with one of them being Alpha Centauri, the closest star to Earth, which is 4.2 light years away, I think. Anyway, I really like the shot, and um. Yeah, basically just because it's my first successful uh, Astro shot. So, yes, if you like this video, please go down there and like it. Subscribe. I'm going to put out a video on this soon, on this, sometimes, on uh, whatever. I have a few, maybe some of these episodes also coming. Um, so, please go down there, like this video, uh, go follow me on Instagram, check out my website, check out Facebook. And... Um, Yes, so I hope you like this. I hope you learned something from, from me critiquing these photos and hopefully you can get a few tips. So, yes, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have fun shooting.